Good morning. We are back. <laughs> I'm back on the ranch, if you couldn't tell. Bruno, as soon as the camera came on, has to get right in the middle of it. <clears throat> Had a wonderful weekend. We have, uh, wow, it was a week. It was gone a week on the boat and had a great time hopefully you guys saw some of the videos i shot uh, it was really a great time uh, i really those people are now family to me as we are here and i really appreciate uh, the people and the time that we get to spend together is amazing to me i really think it's my most important thing the rest of my life is to share my life and my experiences and my happiness and blessings with others. Um, it's interesting to me how many people could be maybe not the most positive people or happy people or whatever, but when they get on that boat, they all just have a great time. And that just reminds me that it is a frame of mind. We are what we believe. We are what we are in the moment. We aren't what we were negatively 15 years ago in your life. You are who you want to be from this moment going forward. Speaking of that, there's some stuff in the news and a lot of us are uh, aware of a few of the uh, interviews that have been coming out, Mr. Flint, and it, and it really hit me as, as you can tell, the dogs are playing grab ass right here while, as soon as they turn the camera on. <laughs> of course, why wouldn't they? Uh, Mr. Flint came out, and I, I just thought it was so interesting. This is a perspective that I hope uh, hope you can uh, enjoy and share. So many of these people, uh, in particular old people like me or older, right, uh, don't understand technology. They don't understand crypto, and yet they claim that it's bad or it's a problem or rat poison squared or whatever the deal is. Well, if you look at his interviews or his videos uh, of him, Three and four years ago, even. Oh, it's bad. It's negative. Oh, it's, you know, launderers, money launderers, and none of that, and it's this, and it's that. And about a year ago, his tune started to really change. And then, about, I'd say, six months ago, he started to get the lingo down. You know what I mean? Like, you could tell he understood what kind of what blockchain was and what, you know, decentralization really meant to the world and isn't it interesting because i always thought blackrock was such a centralized organization that every time he talks about crypto now he talks about decentralization and i thought why would that guy want decentralization that's exact opposite of what i thought mr larry Flynn would ever want in this world and yet he brings it up every single time. So you know how the mind goes. I started thinking to myself, oh, well, he's going to tweak it somehow. He's going to tell everybody it's decentralized when it's not. And I'm not even going to go down that negative road now. I am going to say that having them, having them all in the space and being part, part of uh, who we are. Come on, Rick. Who we, who we are, having them all with us is a great thing. And I, and I think it's really important uh, that all these massive organizations are getting involved. Um, you know, uh, what's her name with uh, Kathy? Gosh, the investment lady. It'll come to me. It looks like hers is going to pass even. Uh, I know, uh, as you guys know, a couple of people from Citadel, I know they are putting together a package as well. They're talking about doing the same thing. They're talking about uh, putting together one. I can't really say this. I'm going to say it anyway. They're, they're, they're putting together two different. <sighs> I don't even want to say it. I'm going to get in trouble here. I'm, it's not that I get in trouble. It's that, that I don't get any more information from these guys. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you do a video on the last time we told you about something? It's like, I don't want to be called out on that. But they're going to try and link a sound money, if you will, put it that way. And it's not precious metals. And they're going to link that with all the other cryptos if that kind of makes sense, into a trading platform to where it'll be an ETF. 
hope I wasn't too vague on that. You traders out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, that's what they plan on doing. A little different wrinkle. It's going to be interesting. I'll be able to talk more about that coming up real soon. Okay, I want to talk about how different age groups gain information and how they accept it and how they bring it into the future of all mankind. For instance, all the kids on the boat, and I'm talking uh, the age groups on the boat were anywhere from, say, 14 to 2 years old. And I had a bunch of them in there. So much fun. I love kids. I love interacting with kids. Kids bring the real. That's what I like to call it. They bring the real. Let's remember. <clears throat> now I'm going to get a little deeper with you guys here. I taught kids how to ski for many, many, many years up in, uh, up in a ski resort called Mammoth Lakes. And my favorite, they, they wanted to promote me to teaching adults. And I did it for... I don't know, a couple of months, and I just, I'm done with that. I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just love kids. And there's a there's something that occurs in all of us, and we have this thing, and it's built in, and it's a knowledge. It's a spiritual knowing of well-being. And I could prove it in the fact that little kids run around fearless. It's because, and this is uh, my opinion, they were on the other side of the veil shortly, not too long ago. They remember being weightless. They remember being spiritual. They remember being free and easy uh, as they were simply a vibration or a thought in heaven or what, whatever you claim that source, light, energy, place in which we all pass and go to or uh, come from. They have been there more recently than the rest of us. So what you can see is in the younger they are, the more playful they are, and they don't think they're going to get broken or hurt or hurt themselves or do anything wrong. They just are free and they run around, especially when you get two or three of them together. They just become free and energetic, and their vibration is through the roof. I mean, you can, it's, it's intense how amazing they are. And we think they're out of control and crazy and loud. But don't you remember when you were that age? And don't you remember how free you were? And how many rules didn't matter to you? You didn't have any damn rules. Okay? You had life. And you lived it every moment because you were connected to that source energy. And you felt it. Okay? So as I see the age groups get a little bit older, those age groups get, like the older they get, the more they've been pounded Yes, pounded by you and I about reality, about what's wrong, about what could break. You could hurt yourself. That could go wrong. You could fall over. You could break your neck. You could fight, catch on fire. You, all of these things, okay? You could get arrested. You could get a D instead of an A. All of these things that we put upon our children from the moment that they're born virtually these days, kids are in expected to know their alphabet before they even go to kindergarten, <clears throat> you are putting reality upon them in a sometimes very negative light. I'm just going to put it to you like that. I see it all the time. And you can tell those strict parents because the kids are strict and they're not free anymore. Yet their younger brother and sister still are and they're running around happy and free. I just want to remind us all that we are part of an incredible universe that believes in freedom and believes in spiritual growth and happiness. And remember, get out there, get in it, enjoy it, okay? Back to Larry and the big guys. When you see people who get it, when the light bulb starts to go off with them and then they start to contemplate. They've had the people who are younger almost always teach them, hey, this is what crypto means to you. This is how you build a business model. This is how you create financial. It, this is how you might profit from it. This is how we build a corporation. It's going that way anyway. I don't care if you like it or not, Mr. Flint. It's happening. We need to adapt. We need to adjust in a business manner and make Get out ahead of where all the youth 
are. Because why? The youth know. The youth know what's happening. They use it. They live with it. They're born with it every day in their hand. And whether or not us old people think that's good for them or not, it does not matter and simply is not relevant. That's your thoughts. That's your beliefs. That's your negativity. Those are your fears about 5G and the rays and all the things and technology and AI is killing us all. Those are your fears, not the youth's fears. They don't see it as fearful. They see it as functional. They see it as reality. It's amazing to me how truthful the youth are. When we were kids, we used to tell stories all the time, right? Just stories, BS stories made up out of nowhere. Kids are about facts today. They can check your statement in a matter of seconds on their phone to tell whether or not that's true. They live in a different technical world than you and I. So when these old financial people start getting it, and the like, wasn't it fun to see his vocabulary change over the last three years? Talking about BlackRock CEO, Flint. He went from, oh yeah, that's terrible, and then, oh yeah, well maybe it might have an application in the world one day too oh, we need to do this because it's decentralization. He knew all the terms, no double spend. He got all of the terms. He's starting to put it together. And it's like, that's an important person for the future of the rest of us in the financial world. You and I are in the right place. I tell you that all the time. It's more evident to me and it's more obvious to everyone around me I couldn't believe everybody, so of course, everybody on the boat knows me as Captain Crypto, basically. <clears throat> and they come to me and I'm like, hey, Alan, wow, that, how about that whole Bitcoin thing? It's way down, you know, oh, crypto's tanking. It's terrible. I, I look at him, I go, well, excuse me, but Bitcoin was $15,000 in January and now it's $30,000. I'm pretty sure it doubled this year. I'm pretty sure that's double. <laughs> and they're like, well, yeah, but it used to be 69. Well, yeah, no, that's right. Didn't go to zero, did it? No, no, it didn't. It's being adopted by all the major corporations around the world. And about all the banks in the world are starting to adopt XRP people. I can't even talk XRP with most of these people because it's just go right over their head. You have to start with Bitcoin and you have to get the basics down with them. And then they, because they're pretty well-to-do people and they don't really, they don't see it the way you and I do. They see it in, as it's still a liability and a risk to their wealth. And I understand that. If you had a lot of wealth, you would be more conservative with your money as well. So that all sort of makes sense. I don't mean to be all over the, all over the board here today, but I... I haven't spoke to you guys in a while. Why well, I know I did on the boat, but I, I'm so excited about where the space is, where we're going, what's happening. It's all adoption, and it's happening now. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that that like that one of the last pages of a great book, and you feel it, and it's starting to get thin, and you're like, I don't want this book to end. I don't. I I'm I won't have it. I, is there another? Is there a sequel? Is there another volume? I'd have to know. And were those few pages or a page or two left? And it's, it's, we're at that point where you're turning that last page to see the last page. And it's the war. Remember we're in that war phase, the third phase? And we're in that war phase to where it's Boom, that page has fallen over and it's too late for them to stop it. Entirely too much adoption. And they know it. And now they're sitting there going, okay, well now what we have to do, so the last page of the war is going to be this. Remember this, because this is what we're going to live through the next few months. 
because I really believe we have a big bull market coming. And I know the economy could get bad, and I know there could be a crash, and I know all that. I hear it from every economist out there. But bottom line, they've been wrong for a long time. Does that mean they're always going to be wrong? No. But I'm going to tell you that prosperity is what you and I have, and what I see coming is prosperity for you and I. And th that last page of the what they're going to do is they're going to get it fearful. They're going to make the last battles fear. They don't want everybody and their brother leaving securities. They don't want everybody leaving their 401ks and putting all their money in the 401k and the, into XRP or Bitcoin or Cardano. What they are going to want everybody to do is slow the roll and do one or two or five percent. Okay. And they're going to still lay the fear on thick to make sure that you, they don't get in and how the normies come in real slow instead of piling in all at once. That's the part we're at in the war, in my opinion, because there's too many fat cats that want in and they want a slice of this pie and that corporate money is coming. It's here and it's, and they're already, you've heard me say this for a year now. They've already been buying, they've already been buying crypto for their friends and family. And now it's become very obvious to everyone. Okay. Anyway, uh, Kathy Woods was the lady I was trying to remember. It looks like she might get an uh, ETF before BlackRock, which would be really cool on a multiple different levels. But um, it would make sense because then that wouldn't look so corrupt. <laughs> I don't know, in some crazy way. I'm sure she's part of some gang. Uh, uh, the, one of the two families running around at the top up there. All right, guys. It's so good to be back with you guys. And I am also going to be doing some uh, work. I'm going to do some uh, live streams this coming weekend. Oh, by the way, it's Friday. Happy Friday to everybody. And you guys have a great weekend. And I'm going to do some live streams. And I look forward to that coming soon. And if you would like to support my Patreon and uh, support what my wife and my son and I do on this channel. It's amazing the response we've already had. So many people. Link will be below. And I love you all, and I will see you soon. So I'm looking at this guy, and he's got this big old beautiful boat. And he's yelling and screaming at the boat next to him. I, to be honest, I, hell, I didn't even know what he was talking about. I didn't even know what he was yelling about. Maybe they were too close or whatever the problem was. He's screaming at this. I'm thinking to myself, there's a man with a $5 million boat. A drink in his hand. His family all around him. Great food, I'm sure. And he can't find happiness. And the little guy that he's yelling at, he's got his family and his kids with him. And a little fishing boat. And they're all smiles, just waving at him. Love and life. Day on the ocean is a big day in their life. Be careful about wealth, my friends. It's not always what it's cracked up to be. Oh well, we're gonna find out, you and I, real soon. You'll do fine. I got faith in you.